Welcome back to Wasteland 2. It's almost time to attempt to resolve the Atchison and Topekan conflict. I'm going to do that by speaking to Kekaba, the leader of the Rail Nomads, and seeing if he's willing or even knows anything about Jesse, who is Casey James' daughter, who apparently is somewhere here with Kekaba and the Rail Nomads, and he wants her back. But before that, I want to gather as much information as I can to help me resolve this conflict in case I need to use that information. And one of the things I want to do is read the story of John Henry. Because he's... I'm not exactly sure what he is, but he's some sort of uh, almost mythical sounding figure in the history of the Topekans and the Atchitsons. However, I only have part two and three, and I found these by digging up places all around here. And I mentioned at the end of the last episode that before this one, I would try to find any undigged undigged places. Well, I just found one, so hopefully this has part one, because I'm missing part one. Damn it. Alright, I guess I'm gonna have to do without part one of the John Henry story, which is weird. Not sure it's gonna make any sense. But uh, a little bit before that, I do want to explore slightly more north. There's probably not much there, but there are some areas up here that I've not explored. I believe this one is... I don't think I can go here, can I? No, I can't click there, yeah. So this this dark spot can't be explored, but some of these places up here... Can be a little bit. I want to see what's down here. The air here smells like it's been filtered through a piss-soaked sock. This is the hobo jungle where junkies run free and weak men die like dogs. Oh, that sounds lovely. The sorrows Whoa. of a thousand aeons are drowned in the tides of vengeance. The gods change their skins, but not their minds. And the shells of the living cast off their regret. That was interesting. That was Vargas, wasn't it? What was he talking about? Was it just a general broadcast? If these shacks weren't leaning against each other, they'd all fall down. Hobos won't hurt you if you don't hurt them. Just don't get between them and their booze. Alright, fair enough. Are they... They're all holding bottles, aren't they? <laughs> they are. They're broken bottles, though, as weapons. Their actual bottles that they drink from seem to be on their hips. They have hip holstered drinking. All right. Well, is there a king of the hobos? Scotchmo, probably you, right? Ooh. Part one. Please let there be part one of the John Henry story. Ah, oh, Scotchman's actually got a gun. <laughs> His picture. A particularly putrid smell emanates from this hobo. He smiles broadly, but his eyes stare off into space. In his hands, he holds a sign that reads, We'll kill for food. Ooh. Yulia Vasiliev's perception bonus. Upon closer inspection, you see a shotgun tucked up under his shirt. That's in a addition to the one he has openly, I'm assuming. That's strange. Hmm. I haven't actually encountered this very often, this perception bonus thing that you get during a conversation. It takes the perception from everybody in the party, right? Not just the one who's talking? I don't know if it does or not. Because if it just takes it from the one who's talking, then I should be talking with Helen, because she has the best perception. Anyway. I used to be quite a fighter before... Oh, of course he's drunk. Before they made me drink the squeezins. I always wanted to be a ranger. Can I join up? Oh my god, I can recruit him? <laughs> oh god. 
god. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I don't really want you. Squeezins? Finest drink in all the land, I always say. Oh, I always say, a man ain't never got to worry as long as he keeps his mind empty and his liver full. Yeah. So what do you say? Can I join up? I don't want you. But apparently, though, even if you're full, uh, if you take on more people, I think they just go to the ranger's citadel and wait for you, or something like that. So I might as well just say yes. Sure. You won't be sorry, give me a gun and I'll kill whoever you want. Oh, that's right, I actually can fit another party member. I think this is the max, right? Seven? God, that's a lot of people in my party. Alright, Scotch Mo, let's see what you've got on you. Of course you have a coach gun. Now how does that compare to a normal shotgun? That's is it a wider range or a lower range? I think it's a wider range, isn't it? Uh wider wider cone. Twenty degree cone angle. 30 degree cone angle. No, never mind. It's actually a lower. It's a it's a more narrow shot. What are your s attributes? Damn! Scotchmo's a lucky son of a bitch! Look at that! He's the most uncharismatic sod you'll ever meet. But damn, is he lucky! <laughs> wow. Near level 8? He's pretty behind in levels. Well, not terribly behind. He's like two, one or two levels behind. He's completely unaware of anything. His charisma and awareness is just... dog shit. Huh. <laughs> He's got a bunch of pain relievers on him. <laughs> of course he does. Well, I'll give those to the duck. Oh, he's got a wedding ring. Till death do us part. But there's a story behind that one. Alright, what about your skills? Shotgun, of course. Safe cracking and lock picking. Well, unfortunately, I've got those covered. So those are pointless, but he's a pretty damn good shot with a shotgun. Nice. Yeah, well, I mean, he's got a decent amount of ammo. Decent gun, good skill. I'll just leave him where he's at. All right. Lovely. I'm sure he'll help with uh, resolving the Topekan Atchison conflict. He'll be the he'll be the comedian as he falls drunk on his ass while we're trying to uh, while we're sweating bullets and trying to negotiate peace. <laughs> Look at that Scotchman with his fancy friends. Alright, well, the hobos love me now that I've got Scotch Scotchmo with me, I guess. Cool. There's a dead human carcass. It's not so cool. <laughs> Boy, is that guy dead. Say, I think I know that guy. Told me I wasn't sober enough to be a ranger. At least I'm not dead. Poor guy, what a way to go. He died recently. A week at the most. Half buried beneath the corpse, you see a Desert Ranger's Circle Star badge with the initials HR scratched into the back. Hmm. Maybe the HR stands for Hellraiser. Interesting. Guess we'll bring that back to Vargas. A ranger's logbook. It must belong to the decomposing body. Unless he stole it. Let's see what's going on with this. Standard issue Desert Ranger logbook. Oh wait, I can't read it? Oh, lame. Beware the android in the hill. 
Huh? That's just a reference to something, right? Is, is that an upside down turtle? Or tortoise? So cute. I want to run up to it and save it, but I'm worried it's like a bomb or something. Is this a trap? Is this some hobo prank? The first and the last shall come to blows, and the sparks of their conflict light the tides in red and blue, indigo and gold. The stars shine silver on their battle. Vargas, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. You can see that this is very close to being an X tortoise. Okay, come on. I'm gonna save you. Or not? How do, how do I save you? I can't you anybody would be strong enough to push the damn tortoise over. Are you kidding me? <laughs> they made it a puzzle to flip over a tortoise. Alright, stress skills. Alright, so we don't use surgery on it. Gotcha. <laughs> Dig it. Uh. Did it just die? You buried the live tortoise. May he rest in peace. Well, <clears throat> just another day in the wasteland. I, I killed it? It's not even buried, it's just there. <laughs> I can't believe they turned that into a puzzle. Just reach your fucking hands down there and push it over. What the hell, did I need to use brute force? I probably just would have punched it to death. Outdoorsman? That was weird. Alright, well. Mr. Shovel can't kill a pile. Or can it? Speaking spell. Some electronic doodle. <laughs> what good's this? It's missing this key. Nice. Grimy vest. <laughs> They're telling Scotchman to steal the booze and bring it back here. Hey, wait, I gotta go dig up my secret stash. Gonna need some squeezins for the road. Ah, shoot. Can't remember where I hid my juice. Gonna have to follow my nose. Alright, let me know if you smell something. Well, other than yourself. Oh, nope, not getting anything. My stash ain't this way. Okay, so... So it's a uh, getting hotter, getting colder sort of thing, I guess. All right, well, I keep. I want to keep going up this way though. Ah, uh, yes, we're back to the good old swing. Where I thought maybe that I could find something because of the swing, swing gun dig engineer's note, but no luck on that front. Oh, 
Oh, I was thinking, oh, so many things to dig, and then I realized, oh, it's a cemetery. Oh, Scotchmo's sad. Reads, Lord, now lettest thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. Luke 2.29 229. I'm assuming that's a ratio. Yes. This is an unmarked grave that has some recent foliage put on it. Here lies the best of friends, Vic and Blood. Here lays Joe, shot in the jaw. He was quick on the trigger, but slow on the draw. As you are standing, so once was I. But as am I now will soon you be, prepare your death to follow me. I'm going to read that again. As you are standing, so once was I. But as am I now will soon you be, prepare your death to follow me. But as am I now will soon you be. Oh my god. That hurts my brain. It was my fault. I shot an arrow into the air. Yeah, never do that. Our beloved Brakeman. Break Brakeman B. Brakeman B. Twenty forty one D. Twenty ninety. Wait, pity he seemed to be right about needing an engine. Was that meant to kind of rhyme? Here lies our oracle. B? Died 2095. We will miss his sage guidance. I'm just assuming like every one of these are just a reference that I don't get. <laughs> Tombstone reads, I told you I was sick. I never listened. Rest in peace, Ralphie Parker. Snake squeezing bottles are strewn all about this grave. Tombstone reads, Dr. B. Bilius Belfour, born 2030. Died 2102. Gone but never forgotten. Until we see again. One more place up north to check. That's northeast. Junkies. Had a car like that once. But then somebody told me I should have shouldn't drink and drive. So I stopped driving. <laughs> I uh, must be talking about this one. Ooh, that is a pretty cool looking car, actually. These don't actually seem to be enemies, though. I can talk with them. They're not red. This camp is littered with trash and reeks of sickness and human feces. A few shabby men huddle around a small fire. Is that a trap? Whoa. Really, Jones in here. Been laying low too long. Gotta get a fix of circuit. Just 30 scrap? Kiss ass. Well, Theodore's good at that. Hey, pal. You look really tired. How about instead of pestering us, you just take a little nap? I, uh, oh, that sounds nice. It's exhausting being strung out all the time. There you go, go to sleep. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder. What are you people doing? What the hell? I tried to disarm it, and half the group goes to the other side and runs into a corner. Okay, I guess they're scared. Any of the other junkies want to talk? 
Hello? Hello? This one trapped too? Oh, electronic lock, sweet. Uh. What the? What the fuck is Harper? What the, what the hell, Harper? Are oh, you got to be kidding me? You were running into the back of a hobo the entire time. Oh. Harper. Alright, well, while he's doing that, let's see if there's anything else here. Come on, volume one, volume one, volume one. Uh. <sighs> Did you get here, Harper? Alright, there you are. <gasps> oh, it's the mushrooms that the dude wanted. Except I already told Kekaba about the... Mushroom dealing dude and his one armed servants went off to deal with them, so. These mushrooms appear to be the magical variety. Well. I don't think I need them for the quest anymore, but who wouldn't want to have radioactive mushrooms? Hold on, where did they go? Good. They went on Scotchmo. That's good. He can hold all the drugs and the weird stuff, so. You know, if he, if he gets caught, like somebody pats us down and searches us. Well, we can just blame it on Scotchmo. Wait, what did we just find? What was that? Use perception. You notice a coffee can full of gunpowder underneath the interceptor, and it's rigged to explode. Oh, what the hell? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's not the best chance. I want to get everybody else away. Yeah, 77% chance. Who would want to blow up this beautiful beast? I'm not really sure what that did, though. I mean, okay, it's not gonna explode, but it wasn't drivable before, so who, like, what? Who would even put an explosive on this thing? I don't know. Oh, yeah, by the way, I do have a bunch of attribute points to distribute. I think it's once you reach level 10, you get to put an attribute point into something. So, yeah, Theodore, Yulia... And Vulture's Cry have attribute points to distribute. I'm not going to do that right now, though, because that's uh, something I want to think pretty deeply about. Because you don't get them very often, so... I want to make sure I put them in the right spot. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah, I don't know where the hell this damn Volume 1 is. But, while everybody's traveling over, let's go ahead and start reading the two volumes that I do have. Alright, so the story of John Henry, part two. Oh god, it already doesn't make any sense. C and O, or whatever, <laughs> knew they couldn't go around it, which left only one way through. 
drilling, blowing, and fighting straight through the heart of the mountain. Yes, I see your disbelief. I hear your gasps of shock. But this is what men were capable of back then, when John Henry still walked this earth. Alright, yeah, so they're talking about laying uh, tracks through a mountain. The Etchisons complained, as you'd expect they would. They wanted to take the easy way out and go around. But the Steel Strikers wouldn't take this. Nor would the Topekans. To cut the discussion short, John Henry took the Luddite family, the strongest family of Topekan Shakers, and without asking permission, simply laid into the mountain, working tirelessly. A great cloud of dust struck up by his mighty blows, and before the day was done, they were ten feet into the mountainside. But as work progressed, weeks on, a salesman appeared, hat in hand and smile on his face. An Atchison agent, most like. Though the truth of it is, Knight is not quite known to us. But he came peddling his mechanical wares, singing the praises of synth workers, Vulcan cannons to blast in the mountainside, and titanium clars to clear the way in mighty snake-like drilling robots called Oligotrons. Oligotrons. If you think John Henry would stand for something like this, you haven't been paying attention. He saw the robot threat long before the rest of us did, and would not let mankind be outdone so easily. He stepped up to the salesman, and laid a big hand on his shoulder. Well, sir, do you reckon your robots could outwork me? Part 3 The salesman laughed, sure of himself, and sent a pair of Vulcans and Titanium Clars to match against John Henry. Meanwhile, the great man picked up two 20-pound hammers, and, followed by the Luddite family, dove into his work with abandon. Tirelessly, the ringing of his hammers resound resounded through the newly built tunnel. The salesman sweated and fretted as he saw John Henry pacing his robotic creatures. He drove them faster and faster, ranting and raving, until one of the Vulcans blew out and exploded. Yet John Henry would not relent. And he worked, and he worked. As dawn came, all men cheered upon seeing John Henry's work was a good ten paces ahead of that of the robots, and the salesman was made to flee into the desert. They cheered and hoisted John Henry to their shoulders and carried him out, he still clinging to his hammers. But they did not take notice of the great man's exhaustion, as he'd put in all he had, and then some. The sun hit John Henry's face as he was carried out, and he smiled knowing he'd won, before letting out his final breath and slumping over, dead. The people wailed in great consternation, but despite it all, they knew that man had won, and would always win. There's a little song here. Okay, so was John Henry actually real? That, that just sounds like a myth. That really doesn't sound real at all. I mean, it's got such the such the structure of like a fable, or I'm not sure if that's the right word, but yeah, like a myth or a fable or something like that. You know, a great test of strength, someone working to a almost impossible degree, and then of course he dies just as he's achieved victory. Ooh, shit! There's one right here. Maybe this is volume one. That'd be awkward. Nope. I think over here that I missed, right? No. It just leads around the back. Say, I don't have anything new to say to the engineer, do I? Nope. Don't have brake shoes, sorry. Okay. I don't think that's actually going to help me resolve this conflict at all, but it was interesting. Okay, now we need to talk about Jessie and see if we can get her back to... What was his name? Casey James, yes. Return Jessie to Casey James. Oh, and apparently Jessie is right there.
Oh, there's a person in the jail cell. I guess I never looked there. Let me see if I can speak to her first. <laughs> I'll have a golden spike on the rocks. Okay, can't really talk to her. So, Kekaba. Why have you returned? Uh, we'll start with the rail thieves. We've cleared out the camp, the camps of rail thieves, for your convenience. You know, butter them up a bit. Thank you, Rangers. Now we can continue our righteous war with those damned Atchison unbothered. A small token of gratitude is yours. Thanks. What would you give us? Keep out of our business, Rangers. Oh, shut up. Did you give us something? I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> let's not have Scotchmo be the one to say this. Um, let's go with Theodore. We've come to ask you to release Jesse. And why would I do that? If I can't use her life as leverage to convince Casey James to surrender, then she will make an excellent example when she is swinging from our front gate. Okay. Ooh, I see a couple... Alright, so I think my hard-ass and or kiss-ass is going to come in handy here. Smart ass level six. Ooh, I don't have that. Kiss ass. Okay, yes. Yes, I have enough skill to use kiss ass. Let's take a look at the others. All right. You'd use a girl's life as leverage? We thought you were a man of honor. What good is honor when you fight a dishonorable enemy? You've seen how Casey James fights. With bombs that kill indiscriminately. The Topekans have lost plenty of innocent girls. Now it's the Atchison's turn. Smartass. Level 4. Fuck, I don't have anybody with smartass, do I? Kiss ass. Yeah, just kiss ass and hard ass. Shit. Is this one of those keyword moments? What can I say? I don't know. I, yeah. You know Casey James will never surrender. So, I finally found a fulcrum point to shift that terrorist's position. Good. What are his conditions? I suppose he... well, is ending the war a condition? I mean, he did agree to that. I don't know if that's really a condition. I suppose it is. You won't discuss any conditions until Jesse's release is secured. Did he actually say that? I don't remember him saying that. He said he would end the war, didn't he? <laughs> Try release Jesse. It's not gonna do anything. Huh? I don't understand the English. Alright. You won't discuss any conditions until Jesse's release is secured. Then we are at an impasse. I will not release Jesse until he accedes to me. You've embroiled yourselves into our situation despite my earlier warnings. So you may as well continue. If you can find a way to get him to the negotiating table, I will consider releasing Jesse once peace is settled, but not before. Okay. This seems like the impasse that would require a keyword to be entered to convince one of them to come to the table. But I'm guessing it's something I probably need to tell Jesse. Or, uh... God damn it, I forgot his name again. I think it's something I need to tell the other dude, not Kekaba. Hmm. 
Do you enjoy executing teenagers? I don't know if I want to say that to him. I'm not going to say that to him. Alright, did my quest update? Oh yeah, so we have a new quest for the mysterious logbook. Yeah, we should talk to Casey about terms. Okay. I hope none of the Atchison's or Topekans die in route, because... Melissa did say she would start killing everybody if another one of her people died. Alright, I'm gonna head over there and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back here and I just realized there's another thing I forgot to dig up. Perhaps you have volume one? Oh, pile of dirt that does not reply to me. Nope. Bunch of ammo, though. I don't even know who needs ammo. Uh, sure, you haven't. No, no, not you. Angela. I can't believe I missed so many piles of dirt. There's probably even more around here. Oh, I did dug that one up, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, somebody was thinking, um, somebody in the comments for one of the previous videos was thinking maybe, maybe this was related to that note, the engineer's note, the swing gun dig. Swing gun dig. It briefly crossed my mind, I don't think so though, because it's not really a swing, is it? I mean, I don't know, it swings back and forth, but it's a seesaw. Not really what I think of a, as a swing. I suppose I could try digging it, though. Nah, I can't. Yeah, I don't know. Swing, gun, dig, swing, gun, dig. I could try shooting it. Uh... <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know if that was related, because it doesn't seem like I have to dig, but what the fuck just happened? I just shot a seesaw with a pistol and it exploded. The fuck just happened? What is this? What? Uh... Okay then. I just found the brake shoe accidentally by shooting a seesaw because it vaguely seemed kind of like a swing from an engineer's note that I found a while ago. That is an interesting turn of events. One that I did not expect. They, they stored the brake shoe inside of a seesaw? Do I take it? I don't even know if I want to take it. I mean, I'm resolving the conflict. Presumably they would return it themselves. Is that gonna fuck it up? I, I guess I'll take it. <laughs> Let's put it in Scotchmo's carrying hands. Returning it to Kekabosh to end this struggle. 
えーあの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、All right, Casey. Kekaba has offered to release your daughter if you make peace. He wants to know your terms. He holds my daughter for ransom and he wants to make peace? No, I will not bargain with kidnappers. So, you would let your daughter die at the hands of those kidnappers to make a point. Maybe you don't really want peace. It wouldn't be me killing her, it would be Kekaba. And I would avenge her just as he avenged his daughter when I. Oh, great John Henry. How did I not see it before? If Jesse died because of. because I wouldn't. Alright, alright. Go tell Kekaba I'm done killing. I'm ready to bargain. Have him meet us at the broken rails, and we'll hash this out. We'll bring the brake shoe, and fix the rails in exchange for the spike and half the profits from the rail trade. But the spike must return to us. This is not negotiable. We can't both have it. Wait a minute. You want to meet at the broken rails? Aren't the broken wa rails where that car was that had an explosive on it? Or there are multiple broken rail spots? I don't know. Like... I feel like this might be a trap. I, th I feel like Casey might be trying to set up a trap. Fix the rails in exchange for the spike and half the profits from the rail trade. Do you think Hecaball will go for that? The spike. The spike has to return to the Atchison's. I don't know. Smart ass level 6. Damn it. I've got multiple asses, but not a smart one. Let's see if I can mention the bomb. Uh, is that what, is that just his generic? I don't know what you're talking about. Hmm. <laughs> he doesn't seem to be very responsive to my keywords. Car bomb. I bet you don't. What about the brake shoe? Seesaw. I, I don't know. All right. Might not be polite, but the sooner you're gone, the better. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming the brake shoe is still there. Yes, it is. Well, shit, I should shoot more stuff. See if more wonderful things fall out. I don't know. Just start shooting everything. Alright. Excuse me, Melissa. Watch your head, Theodore. Alright. Good dodge, Theodore. Okay, well, I'll head back and be right back. Okay. See if Kekaba's willing to agree to the terms.
Casey James has agreed to stop the killing. He's waiting for you by the entrance to the Atchison camp. Ready to bargain. Oh, wait, that's what he meant by the broken rails? Alright. Did I not tell you to stay out of our affairs? Well, what's done is done. What are his terms? Okay, he's not gonna like these. He will fix the rails and return the brake the brake shoe in exchange for the spike and half the profits from the rail trade. These are the same demands he has always made. What's in it for me? He gets everything he wants, and I still have one arm and can't drive my train. Give me one good reason reason reason. <laughs> Give me one good reason why I should change my mind when he has not changed his. One good reason. Okay. Shit. This might be the keyword time. Because even the strongest man needs two arms to drive a train. <laughs> you can start trading again. You can bring an end to the war. Give me one good reason why I should change my mind when he has not changed his. Let me think. Okay, let's try some things, so... He wants a good reason. Do it for John Henry? Not Henry. Henry? No. Alright, do it because they're starving. They're starving! Starvation! Stop making them die! No. Jesse? You don't like her. No, that doesn't work. Okay, what about, um... What about your daughter? Because he killed your daughter, right? Do you want to perpetuate that, so do it for your daughter? For his daughter? I don't know. D da daughter. <laughs> like, I don't know what the hell the form of the damn keyword would be. Text parsers are horrible, so it wouldn't surprise me. If at some point I'm on the right track, but it just doesn't recognize my answer. The androids? You have to unite against the androids? The, the coming threat? Because Melissa's gonna kill you all? If you don't? Is that how you spell Melissa? I don't know. Fuck. You could start trading again. It is true. Ending our feud with the Atchisons would allow us to trade again. But why should those murderers share in the profits after all they've done? Because you're a murderer too. You're a murderer! You could bring an end to the war. I want an end to this war as badly as Casey James does. But it seems all the sacrifices, all the sacrifice, is on our side. I'm not prepared to make peace unless he gives up something, too. I, ho, hold on, ho, hold on. I'm not prepared to make peace unless he gives up something, too. That just gave me an idea. His bodyguards, as a show of, what, good faith or whatever, cut off one of their arms. It seems all the sacrifice is on our side. I am not prepared to make peace unless he gives up something too. Would Casey James give up his arm to save his daughter? That actually sounds... That actually, I really like that idea. Like, that sounds like a really plausible solution to this. It sounds humorously, it sounds darkly humorous. And it seems like it really fit in with the Wasteland universe, but how would I type that in? 
I mean, if I type in one arm, it's just, it's just this. Because even the strongest man needs two arms to drive a train. That's not what I want to say. What would I type in? Um. Can I make... Well, maybe I need to go to Casey James. Maybe I need to ask Casey James if he's willing to give that up. Hmm. Cut off arm. Uh, <laughs> what would I type in? Casey James arm? I don't know. God damn, that sounds plausible. That really sounds like a plausible solution. I just don't know who the hell I'd tell it to and in what form I would say it. I, I let, shit. I might have to load my save game and go back to G, to Casey to see if I can ask him about it. Let's just try all these dialogue dialogue options and see what happens. Okay, uh, because even the strongest man needs two arms to drive a train. You think reminding me of the wreck the Atchison's caused, the wreck that cost me my arm, will make me change my mind? I should kill you for this insult. I, but no. You are right. We Topekans have learned a sad truth in this war. We cannot ride the rails alone. We need the Atchitsons, just as they need us. But the debt in blood. I don't see how Casey James can ever spill enough to repay it. I'm afraid I... <laughs> no, wait. I know what to do. All right, Rangers. Go to Casey at the entrance to the Atchison camp, and tell him this. If, in addition to returning the brake shoe and repairing the rails, he is willing to lose his left arm. Yes! Okay, maybe it's not something I need to enter into a keyword, but I called it! I fucking called it! I'm proud of myself for that. I'm gonna pat myself on the back, literally. Ow, that kinda hurt. He's willing to lose his left arm, then I'm willing to give the Atchison's half our profits and welcome them back into our camp. But the Golden Spike stays with us. That is not negotiable. We can't both have it. Fuck. That's, that's what Casey said. He said that is not negotiable, we can't both have it. Fuck. I need somebody to, like, make us another golden spike. So then they can both have it. Wait, you can't both have it. Why don't you just, like, cut it in half? And then you can both have it. Idiots. I'll be there shortly, ready to deal. But if this is some kind of trick, I'll pound that spike through his heart. Okay. Choppers, bring me the golden spike. Could I say something right now? Oh, I keep thinking of things I could possibly do. I wish they did not even present you with this damn keyword thing, because it's now, now it's driving me nuts as to what you could possibly type in there. Cut it in half! Cut the spike. Melt the spike. Does it need to be capitalized? Apparently it does. Why don't you just, like, share the golden spike? Fucking idiots. Go, rangers! And may you speak with silver tongues! I feel like I just missed my opportunity right there. Like, that was the moment I was supposed to say something. Go, rangers! And may you speak with silver tongues! Then again, I could still talk to him, so maybe not. Mm. 
What if I, like, stole the goddamn golden spike? That way none of them can have it. What if I did that? I mean, I guess I don't have an option to do that now, do I? But what if I did that? And then they can't fight over the fucking thing, because none of them have it. It's gotta have something to do with this freaking golden spike. <sighs> Let me think some more. Okay, I, I couldn't think of anything, so... Let's go meet with Casey. Hi. What does Kekaba have to say for himself? Well, Kekaba will give you half the profits and welcome you back to the camp if you're willing to lose your left arm, and the spike stays with the Topekins. I... I'm sorry. There's still no deal. Even if it means Jesse has to die. After what I've done, I'm willing to lose my arm. I deserve worse than that. But we won't give up the Golden Spike. Our heritage isn't negotiable. We can't both have it. Okay, god damn it. Fuck you and your can't both have it. Give it to me! Give me the Golden Spike. Now's exactly the time for that, you jackasses. Fucking destroy the spike. The deal's too. I'm trying to tell you! That's the sticking point. It's the golden spike. He's willing to give up his goddamn arm, but he's not willing to give up the spike. Our heritage isn't negotiable. We can't both have it. Okay, if you can't both have it, then none of you can have it. So do something else with it. I already said that. Give me the golden spike. What about it? destroy the golden spike? Fuck the fucking spike. There's gotta be something I can do about this damn spike. What, what if you can both have it? Divide it! Divide the spike! You tell Kekaba what I said. Alright, so I guess I'm the mediator. Alright, I've still got a chance. They're not... I was thinking maybe they'd all open fire on each other right away, but... Okay, still a chance. Deal or no deal? <sighs> He still wants the spike. No deal. I knew that stubborn fool wouldn't bend. Well, we can't both have the spike. I know. I know you can't both have the spike. Give me the spike. This is no time for stalling, Rangers. Stick to the point. Oh wow, he actually had a voiced response. Don't blame yourself. Blame that terrorist, Casey James. Now step aside, Rangers. It's time to finish this once and for all. I didn't just miss my chance, did I? Death to the Atchisons! Kill them in John Henry's name! Huh. Fuck no! I don't think so. Got to be a way around this. Deal or no deal? I knew that stubborn fool wouldn't bend. Well, we can't both have the spike. You mean, use the golden spike as a <gasps> final symbolic act that gets our train going again? I... I... Damn it. Yes. That is a John Henry solution if I ever heard one. Tell him I agree. <laughs> it actually worked. I was thinking of more specific things. I was thinking of like, divide the spike, destroy the spike, give me the spike, but you just type in both. See, this is why text parsers are fucking shit. God damn, they're terrible. 
It's so hard to try to communicate your intent for a text parser. Oh my god, so that's what you have to type in both. I... I typed that in not even thinking it would do anything. Wow. Okay. Thank god. <laughs> Thank god. I will wait here. This must be finished. One way or the other. Alright, see if he agrees to that. So? Did he agree? Yep. If you give up your arm, he will let you use the golden spike to repair the rails. Well, then let's get this over with. Ready to drive in the spike? Your arm first. Oh god. For the good of both our tribes, I... I'm ready. Medic! <laughs> As a son of a new brotherhood, here's the brick shoe. Now the spack. For the good of both our tribes. I give my people the good news. I'm glad it's over. So am I. Let's get to work. Well, alrighty then. I feels anticlimactic. I feel like I should go around talking to everybody. Is the quest over? I guess it is. And now I'm just left here alone. Which, I mean, makes sense, because... This is Chief Kekaba, with good news. Thanks to the Desert Rangers, the feud between the Topekans and the Atchisons is over at last. Finally, we can begin to work together again. And we'll soon have the rails repaired and the trains running. The rail nomads will rise again. Oh god, that's his arm, isn't it? Casey James gave his left arm for peace. Hope the coyotes don't get it. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking, it feels so anticlimactic because everybody just walked away, but that's exactly how it should be. I mean, you know, this group here, the rangers here, they're not the center of attention. Well, the whole point in doing this was just to try to help them. We were... Merely the lubricant to a more peaceful future. I do feel like I should go talk to them and catch up. See if anything's changed, or if they want to talk about any new stuff. Uh, but this episode is al already running kind of hellaciously long, so I think I better end it here. I'm very satisfied I finally found a solution to that. I knew there had to be one. Not just because of what people said, but because just the way it was set up just made it look like there's got to be a solution to this. I'm very happy I actually found it. Whew. And those sorts of solutions probably exist for other quests as well. Alright. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.